Welcome everyone, I'm Quinn, the developer of the Minecraft Resource Pack Immersion, and today I'm going to show you how to texture grass at a 32 by 32 resolution in GIMP. Now, before we get into the video, if you haven't seen my first tutorial, I highly recommend watching that first, as I won't be going as in-depth with the techniques that I've already shown. Now, as I said in the previous tutorial, I am always learning, and both my textures and process are constantly in flux. This is especially true right now, as I'm in the process of completely reimagining and overhauling my resource pack. That said, I'd like to provide a bit of an update to the last video. For starters, I modified the dirt by quite a bit. The main changes I made were removing the tint that I had added to try to smooth the texture, as well as making the dirt clumps less connected and streaked. Here's a comparison with the old texture and then the new one. I also discovered the symmetry painting window, which you can use in its tiling mode to texture in multiple places at once. By using this with X and Y intervals of 16 on a 3x3 tiled image of a texture, you can directly modify a texture in its tiled form. This significantly cuts down on the time required to make the texture tileable, since you can essentially ensure that it is tileable while actually making the texture, instead of having to switch back and forth between texturing and tiling it as a preview. This method is also extremely useful for making textures that can support Optifine's alternate blocks. If you don't know what that is, with alternate blocks enabled, certain blocks, such as dirt, grass, and stone, will sometimes use rotated or flipped variants of the texture, so that the repetition of the blocks is less noticeable. This works great with 16x16 16 16 textures, since they are such low resolution, but with higher resolution textures, it can cause visible seams, unless the texture is specifically designed to tile well with itself in rotated and flipped forms. Luckily, the symmetry painting option makes it a lot easier to see how these alternate tilings look, and edit the necessary parts of the texture. Also, slight disclaimer, I have very little experience with creating textures only loosely based on references. All the textures that I make for immersion are faithful higher res recreations of 16x16 16 16 textures, so many of my techniques are dependent on having and using a lower res texture from which to build off of. That said, all of these techniques should apply to any upscaling texture projects, and most of the more general techniques and skills can be applied to any texturing project. Now, let's get into the actual tutorial. So I wanted to show kind of my process for texturing a block that has transparency. So like any, any plants really, plants and grasses. Um, and again, I've already textured this before, but it's been probably around three years since I made the texture and I've learned a lot since then. So it's about time for an overhaul. And also, as you can see here, it isn't quite accurate to the default texture. Um, so here we go. So generally how I start out with a texture like this is I, yes, as you can see, I upscaled and copied over the, the default texture. Um, and now I'm just going to go through and I'm going to use my pencil at uh, full opacity and I'm just going to go between the pencil and the eraser to add more uh, definition to the shape. Okay, and then once I'm happy with the shape, then I go into the channels and I disable the alpha layer. Now, basically what that does is it makes it so that I can't color in the transparent areas. Um, and then I take my pencil down to 20% opacity and start working at the texture. So this is the general texturing stage, which is essentially a back and forth of the basic operations in my workflow. Sample the lightest color from the reference, further define the highlights on my texture. Sample the darkest color, further define the shadows. Sample midtones, blend the highlights and shadows in. Again, I generally start with the paintbrush since that gets a smoother blend, 
and then I switch to the pencil and give it more definition once the texture is well blended. And then after that, I use HSV noise and sharpen filters in alteration with the pencil to add extra detail. Then, once the texture appears to be good, I export it and load up the game. I then grab screenshots, both using the resource pack and the default textures, so that I can compare them in rapid succession and find the even more minute improvements that I need to make. And this last part is essentially just a repetition of the last two stages, tweaking the texture and then loading it into the game and comparing, and repeating this until I'm happy with the texture. Okay, so that is the grass texture. Of course, I have not done the tall grass yet, but this is how it's looking. And then the one thing I, this is something actually that I didn't show in the previous tutorial, but something else that I do is actually um, Immersion is also compatible with uh, the SUS PTGI shaders. Um, oh, whoops. And so to do that, I have to make specular maps, which basically provide the lighting information. Um, how much the surface reflects light. So to do that, I'm going to just this channels tab and I'm adjusting the color. So basically the red channel, however red it is, if it's, if, if it's brighter red, then it's going to reflect more light. If it's darker, it's going to reflect less. So for this one, I'm just doing, we'll try that. And then the naming convention is just underscore S. Okay, that is too, definitely too reflective. As you can see, you know, it's reflecting a lot of light. So try this there we go that seems pretty pretty good still reflecting light but it doesn't look too unnatural so that is basically how to texture a plant with a Translucency. The last bit I wanted to show was a little bit of how I do the double plants. I'm essentially doing the same things, but I first create an image of the full reference, so the 16 by 32 pixel plant, rather than the two textures for the top and bottom, 
And then I do the same for my upscaled version. Then when I finish the texture, I simply copy the top and bottom halves to a separate image and export. Thanks for watching and I hope you found this helpful. If you want to see more videos like this, then be sure to subscribe. I also have a Discord server linked in the description if you want to learn more about my projects or interact with the community. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video, leave a dislike if you found it offensive, and I'll catch you in the next one.